Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Spomele Lezondi. We have finally seen the new iPhones. A Twitter read earlier in the week said it's the most expensive cheap phone in the market. We're thinking it would be a phone for an average African. Chances are that it won't be. We'll tell you more about it later in the program. Remember that we are on Twitter handle SABC Network. Tweet us. Let's get to your technology news now. Newspapers belonging to Alpha Media in Zimbabwe were hacked. When one visited one of their websites for a few minutes last week, they would have seen the message behind me. The message says it comes from a group fighting for serious freedom. Zimbabwe's Alpha Media is one of the country's largest media companies. Some of its most well-known news publications include Newsday, The Standard, and The Zimbabwe Independent. On Tuesday, the web versions of these three publications were temporarily unavailable. Instead, visitors to these sites were diverted to this file. The attackers were going with the hashtag Free Syrian Hacktivism course. This came a few weeks after the New York Times Twitter account was also hacked by a different group linked to the Syrian conflict. Back in Zimbabwe, the events of the last week raised serious security questions. They exposed the vulnerability of the computer systems at Alpha Media Holdings. A senior staff member at the company confirmed there was indeed some interference. He insisted, though, that this was a failed hacking attempt. The three websites are back online. The governments of Botswana and Abu Dhabi have signed a Memorandum of Understanding for Information, Communications and Technology. Deputy Director General of the Botswana National Strategy Office, Louis Malikongwa, says the MOU will enable the government to offer easy, efficient and user-friendly digital services. The Southern African country says this agreement will improve government portals and other e-services. This will then enable Botswana to have easy access to online information provided by the government. Al-Shabaab has opened a new Twitter account. The militant group hasn't had an easy week. A group of Somali elders have issued a fatwa against them. Al-Shabaab means the youth. Last week, the group's old Twitter account was blocked after it used the social network to take responsibility for an attack it had carried out. Al-Shabaab has a brand new English Twitter account. The first account at HSM Press was created in December 2011 in response to the Kenyan military's intervention in Somalia. Their account lasted for a full year before they posted a threat to kill Kenyan hostages. Twitter has a policy in which accounts can be suspended if users publish threats of violence. And so at HSM Press ceased to exist. But suspending personal accounts on the web is often a rather futile exercise. Not surprising then that Al-Shabaab's second English account soon surfaced. This time around, its reincarnation was at HSM Press 1. Two weeks ago, Twitter terminated the then seven-month-old account. This was after the Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Shabaab boasted about an ambush it had conducted on the convoy of the Somali president. Although President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed escaped unhurt, Twitter once again had to act. Now the militant group has created yet another account at HSM underscore press, which is one week old. Facebook is now South Africa's most popular social network. It's the first time this happens in the country. For years, South Africans preferred locally developed mixes over Facebook. New research by Worldwide Works shows that Facebook is at 9.4 million active users. This is an increase from last year's 6.8 million. Twitter has grown the most, though. It now has 100 and it has grown 129%. Hemshwari is a Kenyan app that has received the 21st Century Achievement Award in Emerging Technology in the United States of America. The application was created by the Commercial Bank of Africa, CBA. Hemshwari allows mobile money and PESA users who bank with CBA to, uh, to save and borrow money. We took it for you. Hemshwari, the revolutionary... Launched in November 2012 by the Commercial Bank of Africa and Safaricom, Mshwari was created for M-Pesa customers. CBA has received 21st Century Achievement Award in Emerging Technology for the app in a ceremony held in Washington, D.C., USA. With Mshwari, one can open and operate an account without visiting the bank. 
All they need is a mobile phone and M-Pesa. Those awarded at the ceremony were praised by Google's Vice President Vintin Seth for going beyond ideas and beyond technology. M South African fuel station attendants have been on strike this week, so we decided to test an electric car. Nissan says it will be launching it in South Africa in October. Ross Garvey, Nissan's chief marketing manager, is showing me that this car has no oil filter. There's also no petrol tank and everything else that goes with a petrol or diesel car has been removed. The Leaf is Nissan's flagship electric car. It's the world's best-selling electric car and the first fully electric car to be sold in South Africa. It's just like any normal everyday car, excepting it switches to electric power rather than using fuel. So of course there's no emissions, uh, it's safe for the environment. For now, there are some charging stations at Nissan dealerships. When we launch the car, it will be available for the public uh, come the end of October this year. Uh, we'll announce the details of the vehicle at the Johannesburg International Motor Show in October. And uh, by that stage, we aim to have at least uh, 14 quick charging stations around Johannesburg uh, and 10 Nissan dealers, which will offer free charging to customers. And it won't be too much of a problem if a charging station is too far. It could take up to seven hours for the car to fully charge, so it's best for one to do it overnight. Nissan doesn't want to commit itself on pricing just yet, but it won't be cheap. The high price will, however, buy you cleaner air. For the first time, Kenyans will be able to insure their mobile phones. Kenya Orient Insurance says it will start doing this tomorrow. It now means if one loses their smartphone handset or damages it, they can get a new one if insured. The insurance company will allow only two claims per year. This, it says, is because many insurance claims in the country are fraudulent. One can also insure more than one device. Nigeria has launched an application that makes it easy for the middle class to find taxis. They say Easy Taxi beats standing on the side of the road to stop a passing cab. The company that developed it says it has invested 100 million rand in the African market. Akia Noma, who runs a taxi cab business in Lagos, has just received an alert for a pickup. I think it's a very good day. The passenger is waiting for me now. I need to go and pick the passenger. Lucky runs his business in Lagos, a city of very heavy traffic. Here, public transport remains a huge problem. To try and improve things, a German startup company recently launched a taxi service application called Easy Taxi. It works for any sort of phone like Blackberry, Android, Windows, and even iOS. Two of them will appear. The first one is the app for the users. So you just need, if you are a user, you want to like call a taxi, you just tap on the app, it's going to ask you for install it. When a booking takes place, an alert goes to the closest drivers. The first driver to accept the beep is the one to get the business. It's just one tap away on my phone. I get the driver's details before he even arrives. And once he's ar he arrives, all I have to do is just step out of my house and he's waiting for me outside. The Easy Taxi initiative plans to expand to other parts of Africa. Twitter plans to go public. The American microblogging site Filing has attracted interest from many underwriters. This is probably the most intended listing on Wall Street since Facebook's last year. But if you remember carefully, Facebook's shares dropped significantly after its listing in 2012. New Nokia phones have launched in the South African market. This is despite that Nokia is a brand we will hear less and less of in future. Producer Lebo Sijage has been playing around with this thingamajig. This is what she thinks of it. The Nokia Lumia 925 and 625 have officially hit South African stores. The smartphones were initially introduced in London this May and have since been distributed all over the world. The new Lumia handset is designed with a metal body which is a first for Nokia range with the polycarbonate made available in white, grey or black. The device features an 8.7 megapixel camera that allows one to snap 10 images at once. You can also edit, animate and enhance pictures straight away with features such as best shot and motion focus. Its counterpart, the Lumia 625, is made up of a unique semi-transparent changeable shell with a wide variety of colors. It is the very first Nokia phone to boast a 4.7-inch screen, which in fact is the largest screen that any Nokia device has ever had. 
Both devices are powered by Windows Phones 8 and boast 4G connectivity speed. The new iPhone 5C has launched some mixed reactions in China. Some say it is the most expensive cheap phone in the market, but there are a few good things about the new iPhone. Many people around the world dream of owning an iPhone. Sadly, it's not everyone that can afford it. But Apple has launched a bid to penetrate that market with an iPhone 5C. But the 5C has been met by a lot of negativity. In America, the 5S is equivalent of 2,000 rands and the 5C is equivalent of 1,000 rands. The Chinese say in their country the 5C is too expensive for what was marketed as an affordable phone. And that's also because the country has loads of local brands that are cheaper. I think there was much expectation that trying to reach a broader audience, especially in emerging markets, was going to uh, drive the price down. They haven't done that, and I think it speaks to their belief in their premium brand and, and customers' willingness to pay for that brand. Despite all the negativity around pricing, the phone has given a boost to its video chat camera. It now has 1.2 camera features enhanced light sensitivity, and this makes video calls much clearer and sharper, and that's not all. They're now including a uh, coprocessor, an M7 coprocessor, that's just going to be dedicated and focused to people's uh, movements and the ability to track people. It remains to be seen how the iPhone will be received in Africa and the rest of the world. We are on at SABC Network on Twitter. Let's take a short break now. When we return, we will get to our discussion about that Mesa Dialogue on Internet Freedom. Stay with us. SABC News. We report, contextualize, and present news and current affairs honestly, fairly, and fully. We consider it a duty to provide consistent, relevant, useful, and top quality information and analysis. Our mission is to provide credible, accurate, and interesting news programming, bringing news into everyone's homes in everyone's languages. Thank you, South Africa, for relying on SABC News for quality news output and for making us your number one source of information. SABC News, Africa's news leader. As the biggest, the most extensive, diverse news organization and the best content provider of choice in Africa, in Africa. we aim to offer the nation breaking, breaking news, news, continuous news. content updates, and current affairs programming throughout, throughout the, day. the day. We are extremely devoted to putting the news in context and providing the nation with the news they want in their own language. language. We reflect the world to the nation and the nation to itself. This is SABC News. All local, all global, all the time. Exclusive to DSTV. Why watch the news on SABC? We bring you news in your own language. News that affect you. Sports. We have Catherine Drew, SABC News at the High Court in London. Sherwin Bryce's SABC News News. Sarah Kimani, SABC News, Nairobi. We touch and change people's lives. SABC News, Africa's news leader. Welcome back. Be a part of our network on SABC Network on Twitter. 
Now, the Media Institute of Southern Africa, MISA, plans to hold a one-day regional dialogue on freedom of expression in cyberspace. The discussion will focus on Southern Africa. Social media has always changed the way we do things. In recent times, we've seen coups in progress live on Twitter. Social networks have also been credited with helping start revolutions. We are Khalid Saeed, is a group that started on Facebook. And later, people took to the streets after talking about all that was wrong in their country. What followed were many people taking to social networks. Eventually, President Hosni Mubarak was forced to step down. Clicks attend to action on the streets. Pictures of protests in Mali started appearing on Twitter in May 2012. It turned out that the pictures circulating on the social networking site were in fact a coup in progress. And soon the presidential palace had been occupied. We've also heard of countries with governments who threatened to block social media. Now, this changing landscape will be a part of what will be discussed in the MISA dialogue. Giving presentations will be academics, editors, journalists and bloggers from various countries in the region. To talk to us about it is Levi Kapwato, the Regional Program Specialist of Media Freedom Monitoring and Research at MISA. Hello and welcome. Thank you very much. Now, why did MISA decide to hold this dialogue? Well, we decided to hold this dialogue because we've been around for 20 years and uh, we've witnessed the changing landscape uh, within uh, the media sector and uh, quite recently uh, freedom of expression in cyberspace has become uh, our preoccupation. Uh, journalists have been affected, we now have uh, bloggers and there's so much social activism going on. Uh, but there are also very significant threats uh, that are occurring uh, on the internet. Uh, so digital security is also uh, quite um, of critical concern uh, to us as well. Then because of the social activism that's going on uh, within Southern Africa, and if you uh, have the background uh, of the democratization process, you then see that uh, some governments are not too comfortable with having their citizens uh, do certain things uh, on social media or on the internet. Would you care to mention some of those governments? Well, we've noticed uh, quite uh, recently, um, perhaps the most telling statement was from uh, Zimbabwe's uh, former Minister of Justice, uh, Patrick Chinamasa, at the Human Rights Council in Geneva, who described the internet as a tool for regime change. So that's the kind of attitudes uh, that we're dealing with and that's the kind of uh, responses we're dealing with uh, within um, uh, the region and that's what we need to, uh, to respond to. Now, your speakers, you have a whole range of speakers. Would you just take us through some of them and how you selected them? All right. Uh, as you said in your intro, we have academics, we have uh, journalists, we have editors, and we also have uh, donors. The whole idea is to bring together all these people and lead uh, discussions around issues of freedom of expression in cyberspace. It's a very new concept, uh, but people are using technology, uh, but they're not too aware of how much... Um, uh, vulnerabilities are, are, are there when they're o o online and also we want to sort of shape a discussion that can uh, lead us towards uh, a more coherent uh, policy uh, formulation and the like. So it's, we, we view this as a, as a critical opportunity for civil society to begin to engage more substantively with uh, regional governments. And do you think Africans understand what internet freedom is and what they should or shouldn't do on the internet? I think we do. We do have a, a, a very good understanding of what uh, internet freedom is. But, uh, you know, we're using Twitter, which is a US-based company, for instance, um, which means whatever you do on Twitter is then subject to uh, US law. Uh, whatever you do on Facebook and Google and the like is subject to US law. So, you know, your restrictions, given what's been happening um, after uh, Edward Snowden uh, revelations, WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, and the like, so internet freedom becomes quite a contested uh, concept uh, given that background. So this is the kind of stuff that would uh, really love to bring to the public and raise awareness around those issues. And uh, would you just give us the facts now, when is it starting and can anybody attend? Anybody is free to attend. The regional dialogue is on Friday, uh, 20 September, uh, here in Joburg uh, in Fairmount. We'll publish uh, details on our uh, Twitter handle, that's at Misa Regional. At Miss Original, yes. Miss Original, yes. All right, sure. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. All right. And after the break, we'll talk about an award winning app that helps adults with CPR for kids. Stay with us. Why watch?
Watch the news on SABC. We bring you news in your own language. News that affect you. Sports. We have Catherine Drew, SABC News at the High Court in London. Sherwin Bryce's SABC News News. Sarah Kimani, SABC News, Nairobi. We touch and change people's lives. SABC News, Africa's news leader. Get all the latest news from the SABC's online news services on our website. Breaking news and in-depth coverage of everything from business, sports to politics and lifestyle. Catch the top news clips and watch live streaming of major news events on the SABC News YouTube channel whenever. Stay connected on the SABC News Facebook page and have your say on news that matters to you. And for the latest headlines and live updates from our reporters, follow us on Twitter. SABC Digital News, anytime, anywhere. SABC News plays a critical role in providing unbiased and reliable news. We have a well-established reputation of uncovering, reporting and delivering news. A significant growth in popularity of our news demonstrates the demand for our news content. We continue to provide unrivaled coverage of vital events in and out of the country. Wherever the news is happening, we'll be there to bring them to you at the right time. No one has the news covered like SABC News. We lead and they follow. SABC News, Africa's news leader. Well, good evening. Welcome to yet another bumper edition of Sports Live. Tonight we have a bit of a triple threat in the show. That's Sports Live, daily at 8.30 p.m. on SABC News, Channel 404. I wonder how many of us would know what to do if a small child needed quick health assistance when in danger. Kids Aid is an app designed to help us with children's medical emergency situations. It's even won awards for this. Joining me in the studio to discuss this app is Andre Fermulen, who is responsible for application development services at Business Connection, and Business Connection designed the application. Hello and welcome. Welcome. Thank you for having us. What made Business Connection want to design it? Well, it's actually a good story behind it. Uh, uh, one of my colleagues, Martinez, and a good friend of ours, Steve Morris, over a glass of wine, discussed uh, medical situations when it comes to kids. And what Steve has done with a friend of his, Paul LaRue, is they've designed a, a, a book, a physical book, with quick access to emergency information for kids. It actually sparked, the idea was sparked by them by accident that they act actually had their homes. First glance at this thing, I really saw the app in all of this, and uh, the rest is history. Uh, we never expect, expected it to be an award-winning one, but uh, certainly by doing the right things, we're starting to see the right reaction from the, from the public, really. Who are you targeting? Is it just parents? No, it's actually, we initially thought it was parents, but it's any caretaker, really. Uh, we showed great interest from teachers, uh, sports, coaches, all these guys. They really see the need of having all this emergency information right in your pocket. And uh, it really, uh, we're starting to use more features off the phone, like the GPS to navigate you to the closest hospital. Apart from the great content that EMT, uh, the Emergency Medical Training Group, provided us with, um, it uses the phone uh, voice over, so in an emergency situation, you don't want to really read all that text. It gives you the right to the point information, big buttons to press, and it gives you the right information at hand. What were some of the things that you had to consider? Because as you mentioned that when a child is in danger, you don't have time to be reading through a lot of text. Um, what were other things that you had to consider? Well, I think uh, the book was so well designed. And uh, looking at the, the information, the, the minute you open up the app, it shows you CPR, which is a, a, you know, a quick reaction type uh, incident. But it's got other uh, features like snake bites and shock and all of these other topics that you can press on. And immediately it starts talking to you giving your responses back. It's got all the emergency numbers pre-recorded, pre so you just click and it just dials automatically. So now you can get uh, Netcare and all those guys online as well. 
So we started to put all these features uh, on top of the great content and uh, the visuals in the app really makes for good. There's really little to read to, 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 to get through an emergency situation. You mentioned awards. Um, would you tell us about those awards? Yeah, we're very proud about that. You know, uh, Business Connection has been very fortunate to be a uh, second year running, winning award winner of uh, App of the Year. MTN has launched a great platform to, to host these type of uh, events. Last year we won uh, Best Android application for TransUnion's uh, car value. And this year, Kids Aid really sparked the attention of the judges uh, and uh, we won it for Windows Mobile. And we're very, very fortunate about that because the competition is really stiff. Uh, every year there's more and more apps and uh, in this great country of ours, th there's so much innovation that's coming out, mm. especially in this young history, industry of mobile. Mm. Is it just Windows? We want it in just Windows, but our application runs on uh, iOS and Android. BlackBerry is soon to come. Um, we were just shortlisted in so many categories. Uh, we had about five applications shortlisted, but we were fortunate that this application was shortlisted in about four or five categories, and we, we came through in this, uh, this way. We had stiff competition from, from a couple of very, very good applications. How do we download it? Well, we, we've, we've downloaded, well, we uploaded all the um, app stores, mainly uh, iOS in the States and the US. We know that all of our South African um, app users uh, got accounts in all these countries, so we had to uh, upload it in the Play Store for Google, uh, the Windows uh, Store, and then obviously worldwide iOS stores. So it's any, any store you're connected to at the moment. Right, but is it just for the South African market? It's actually written and made for South Africans. Um, the current version has got a localized theme, so we are uh, looking at now localizing it for the States and for the UK and for other, other countries. And the only difference would really be mm. the telephone numbers and emergency numbers. All right, Andre Vermeulen from Business Connection, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you very much. Right. And don't forget to find us on SABC Network on Twitter. You can also use that to tell us about hashtags, blogs and stories you're following in social media. Let's take a look at some of the things that have been happening in those platforms now. On Twitter, many South Africans have been discussing a story that led in one of the Sunday newspapers... The story says the National Prosecuting Authority, NPA, is accusing senior prosecutor Glennis Breitenbach of being a spy. Solomon, who tweets as at Isizulu, says, Wow, Spooksville discredits at any cost yet another twist. Movie script. Lazarus Masilela says the NPA will do anything including forging a letter of spyship. On Saturday, people in Johannesburg celebrated Joburg Day with this photo appearing on Twitter. The group Goldfish shared a photo of their performance on Facebook. On Twitter, Ali Khan Satri has been paraphrasing Comesa President Yoweri Museveni's speech at the Comesa meeting. One of the tweets reads, Little bit of work on infrastructure will boom Africa economy, says President Museveni. And Kenyan musician Sauti Sol tweets that he is rehearsing for Lake of Stars, a music concert to take place in Malawi. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for being a part of our network. We are on Twitter handle SABC Network, so get tweeting. Conversations don't have to stop here. The video we leave you with shows a group of French surfers catching some waves in the southern African country of Namibia. The full video can be found on the French Connections Vimeo page under the heading Namibia. From me and the rest of the team, have a good one. Happy and sad music. When you hear the happy music, play your rhythm just as you did before, like this.
SABC News. We report, contextualize, and present news and current affairs honestly, fairly, and fully. We consider it a duty to provide consistent, relevant, useful, and top quality information and analysis. Our mission is to provide credible, accurate, and interesting news programming, bringing news into everyone's homes in everyone's languages. Thank you, South Africa, for relying on SABC News for quality news output and for making us your number one source of information. SABC News, Africa's news leader. Did you at any point imagine that you would find yourself in that uh, position? We all hustle. You hustle for a good story. I hustle to make money. Mm. Every one of us is a hustler. Glenn Agliotti, yes. did you kill Brett Kebble? No, not at all. Why were you accused of killing Brett Kebble? Because it suited the NPA at the time and the Scorpions. That's Question Time, Channel 404. Welcome to SABC News Channel 404, I'm Lulu Gaboo.